Oh, jeepers! You're listening to Smash or Pass. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another video on the JV. Hello. And Millie channel. We're, as always, joined by Rihanna. Hi. And today we have the pleasure of being joined also by Sophie. Hi. And we are so excited to be able to interview Connor Briggs, who is Fred from the new Scooby-Doo live show. So welcome Hello. To yeah, you're welcome. It is such a pleasure to have you here today. And I guess to kick off the questions, we noticed that via way of IMDb and online that you have been on some on-screen acting roles such as Netflix, The Killing. How does acting on stage compare with on screen? Well, wow, that's, that's a question that's been tried to be answered by many, many people, many <laughs> people smarter than me, but I'll give my best stab at it. Um, it's it's a lot to do with movement. A lot of people say is uh, with acting on screen, it's it's smaller movement and on stage, it's bigger movement, but it's not entirely true. You can be as big as you want on screen as long as you are putting the thoughts behind the action. I, I find the biggest, the biggest difference that's concrete is the amount of time that you have to do the scene. Like if you're on stage, you're going through the entire piece um, all at once so you get that through line in your thoughts and you don't have to come out of it before you go into the next scene you're doing everything in linear order uh, and you also have a t at least a two-week rehearsal process but on film you have like one day on the on the killing I got there in the morning they gave me the script learned my line and then we ran up a field uh, about 20 times doing the exact same line uh, <laughs> in the exact same way um, but there's a lot of nuance that you can find between takes and as you discover your character more as you're doing going through the takes you can add more things and it's it's really fun to see that everything that you can possibly add every thought every eyebrow movement and eye movement on film gets captured and that's what i do love that's what i love about it yeah, that's really good i mean like you say there's some elements there that you really love about the more on film things but do you have a preference of whether it's an either on stage performance or a film one um no i mean i haven't i haven't explored film as much as i'd like to i i grew up as an actor in the theater in a theater background um really my most preferred form of acting if you call it that is, is shakespearean acting that's what i that's my bread and butter that's what i love to do um <laughs> those are the the complete works behind me um oh, wow. and the, i would love to do that on either film or stage. I've been uh, looking into abridging a version of Hamlet to do on screen. Um, yeah. Yeah, obviously you just mentioned Shakespeare, but are there any other actors or singers that have influenced you as a child or anything to become, you know, the great actor that you are today? <laughs> as a very kind of great actor, I'll take that. Um, I love um, Sir Ian McKellen. Uh, he is by far one of my most idolized actors um my dream my dream as an actor is to be the old man actor in, in shakespeare shows um and that's what i want to do and i got that from him like he just takes so much time with uh with his speech and with his movements because he's been around for a long time and he's comfortable stretching out the time as much as he feels comfortable to do um Sir McKellen, also uh, Colin Mockery and Ryan Stiles. Uh, I mean, I always watch them on uh, who, Whose Line Is It Anyways? And um, always laughed, laughed out loud. And just the amount of energy and wit that they can bring to their performances is astounding and something that I strive to do. Oh, that's amazing. And, you know, just quickly going back to the Shakespearean thing, there's so many different stories that he's written. And I, when I was growing up, I, and I still do now, I go back and I read so many of his plays. And we saw that you've performed in a production of Cinderella, which is basically a tale as old as time. So can you please elaborate on what that was, what that experience was like? Yeah, absolutely. It was, um, it was for a company called Theatre Under the Stars in Vancouver. Um, it's, it's a beautiful uh, theatre. It's the Mac and Bowl in Stanley Park. And you're literally doing, you're literally acting under the stars, uh, which is immaculate in a way that, um, especially Shakespeare, but I believe all, all theater can benefit from being performed outside. Um, it was a great, fantastical production that really stretched the boundaries of the traditional storytelling of Cinderella um, uh, with our fantastic director, Sarah Rogers. Um, she really did a great job bringing that story to life in a, a new way that I hadn't 
seen it uh, done before. Um, yeah, it was. It's it's a production company that specializes in giving opportunity to young artists. Um, so being in a room with so much energy from from artists who really want to make their stamp on the industry and are really excited to do so um, was really invigorating. Yeah, that's fantastic. And like you know, we've kind of made this a little bit of a subtopic now with Shakespeare. One thing that I love about their plays, especially Henry V, is just the drama that can go into it. But of course, the thing with all like the Shakespeare plays, or at least what's been come to understand today, is that that was primarily they kind of got the privilege of almost acting in one place, being the Globe Theatre, which of course one only has to look at the schedule for the Scooby-Doo live show to realise yeah. that it's very, pretty much the opposite of that with so much travelling and touring, plane journeys and all of that. Is the travelling aspect of the show something that you enjoy or would you say rather a Globe Theatre type of experience where it's just one location that you need to check into? I think while I'm still young, I can do this touring thing, <laughs> at least. <laughs> Um, yeah, I've talked talk to a bunch of uh, artists in, in the industry, like uh, one of my first questions as I meet people on the tour, do you enjoy doing this? And a lot of them say, yeah, absolutely, I love doing it. And I, I personally do. I love being immersed with the cast. Um, we have such a lovely, lovely group of people. Everyone is judgment-free, supportive, and willing to make themselves vulnerable and tell, share stories about their lives. And it's so beautiful and a beautiful cast to be a part of. Um, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I love that you mentioned Henry V, because one of my favorite lines from Shakespeare is in that, um, for he that sheds his blood with me today shall be my brother. And I feel that with this cast, traveling with them and having to go out at midnight and find some something to eat after a show um, because we haven't eaten and that, or we come out and on a bus after 12 hours of driving and we've just been sitting and <laughs> stewing in that those seats on that bus all together. Um, it's, it's a powerful experience. And um, yeah, that, that, that's, that's the thing I'll say about that. Oh, and again, like, just the way that all of the cast have spoken about the experience, just because obviously we're here in the UK, so we haven't had a chance to make the trip over to physically see the show, just speaking to amazing people such as yourself, and I think we've pretty much interviewed the whole entire cast at this point, like, just the stories we get, we almost feel like we're on this mission of piecing together this amazing backstory, and like you say, it does seem like everyone's got such a large level of esprit de corps again to choose another line from Shakespeare but in terms of switching up the scene a bit of course this is a Scooby-Doo based play and that's been a show that's been going on since 1969 so was the show something you grew up with at all or do you have any favorite tv shows from Scooby or movies that are particularly memorable to you? Oh yeah oh yeah absolutely I loved uh what's new Scooby-Doo was my bread and butter growing up um I, I i had a band back in college and i remember we had this performing nights night and we played the song with the scooby-doo by simple plan for that performance and that's just an awesome awesome tune uh so that was a great experience um i i was new scooby-doo both both of the live action movies um or the i should say scooby-doo and then scooby-doo uh monsters unleashed um yeah, those are probably the most memorable for me. I just got into Scooby-Doo Mystery Incorporated, and I really like it, so I hope that becomes part of my canon. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we were quite, like, we only discovered um, that very, very recently, and it is so good, right, JB? Like... Yeah, definitely, definitely one of my favourites. <laughs> um, and I don't know if this question may be a bit, you know, already answered, given the character that you're playing, but did you have a member of the gang that you found resonated with you the most? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's interesting because um, Fred was never my favorite member of the gang beforehand. It was only through researching him and seeing what makes him tick as, as a person that kind of made him my favorite. And I know it's, it's probably not um, often said that Fred is a favorite. It's often Velma or Shaggy and Shaggy was my favorite growing up. Absolutely. I ate so much as a kid and I would just shovel things down you know the classic saying there's a hole in your leg um where's it all going that was me as a kid um yeah just, just the, the the ability to be goofy of shaggy like I mentioned with uh Colin Mockery and Ryan Stiles 
um that's that's something that really appealed to me as a youngin um but yeah no now now fred has definitely caught my eye <laughs> definitely caught my eye it's <laughs> definitely almost coincidental how you mentioned mystery incorporated because i think that show when people think about the animated version of fred that's the one that people have gone like after seeing that like that's put fred out as one of my favorites so i think as a fred fan yourself watching that show should be an amazing experience for you absolutely because i mean beforehand fred was kind of the leader he drove the mystery machine he set some traps um but like mystery incorporated they made him the trap guy and he loves everything he's just happy to be there um i, I give a lot of my um a lot of my character building credit to a, a channel jello apocalypse i'm not sure if you guys watched his video of uh, who's the best mystery character and why it's red oh i've it, seen that yeah it's so yeah. funny he's very <laughs> very funny uh, but i constantly quote the line to my cast um fred is incapable of wrong he's only capable of oops <laughs> <laughs> that's incredible <laughs> and like jamie said we we saw the video and it was so good it is so funny and um one thing that i guess you can probably tell from the backdrop of all three of us really is that scooby-doo merch is something that we tend to collect and have a lot of growing up did you have any scooby-doo toys or when you joined the live show did anybody see like any scooby-doo things out and about that they picked up for you or anything like that oh yeah um recently um there was um, these little apple juice bottles in the States and they had a little Scooby-Doo um, head on top. And so Christelle was the first one to find it. Christelle plays Margareta and she found it at the, the one of the airports. I think it was in Chicago and we saw it and bought it. And then I found one recently as we we're stopping at a gas station, um, <laughs> grabbed, grabbed a little apple juice with a Scooby head on it. Um, and then when I was younger, I did have Scooby-Doo underpants. This was five or six. So, <laughs> yeah. Oh, um, I would still have some today. If they made some really nice, comfortable Scooby-Doo underpants, I would absolutely give them a go. Well, JB does still have the Scooby-Doo pajamas, don't you, oh, JB? Yeah. Oh, wow. I should have worn them for this. <laughs> Um, so throughout Scooby Doo history, there's been several, you know, several incarnations of different actors um, playing the role of different gang members. Um, obviously, for Fred, it's just usually been Frank Welker. I know the live action that it's Freddie Prince Jr. Did you ever reach out to any of them or get any inspiration from them for your role as Fred? Um, I would have loved to reach out to Frank Welker. But he is like the second highest grossing actor of all time. And I think I'm the 50 millionth highest grossing mm -hmm. actor of all time. Uh, so that would be quite, quite the jump. Uh, but, but I definitely, I did the research on their roles um, for Fred. Um, I had a lot of trouble with the voice of Fred at, at first because it's unlike Shaggy and Velma, who are so not necessarily a regular person speech. Fred is just uh, a regular speech. Frank Welker said it in, uh, Welker said it in an interview. Um, that his Fred voice is just his voice on five cups of coffee. Um, so I, I kind of drew from that. Uh, and then also, uh, Freddie Prince Jr., I stole from him that he kind of just used his own voice in the show. So I kind of, uh, again, just incorporated my own voice, but added energy and um, vitality and like a, a high school um, a high school kid's uh, voice to it. Um, along with a, with a guy who's just happy to be there with his friends. And that really comes through in the voice as well, I think. That's brilliant. Um, moving on to the actual show, how were you cast within it? How, what was the role? How did you do it? Uh, it was it was a self-tape at, at first. I um, My agent said, hey, there's a Scooby-Doo thing. You want to audition for it? I'm like, heck yes, I love Scooby-Doo. Uh, so... They sent me a song and a scene, and so I read for the scene. At first, the song, if you if you noticed, if you would if you would see the show, the um, song in the cast recording is higher than I do it in the show because I am a, I'm a bass baritone. I can't re reach those high notes that he's hitting in the track. Um, but it j changing the key for me it adds a different flavor to the song. I think it's less, it's more of a um, let's get going than a. Fun, <laughs> fun party. I mean, it's still a fun party uh, in the song, but it's uh, it's a different experience. Uh, so I did the audition, 
And then I went in for a callback. I got on a call with Martin and Ella, the writers of the show, as well as uh, Pei, the, um, the artistic director. And they had me do a scene. They had me sing the song again, as well as do uh, one of my own tunes. Uh, I Can't Stop Loving You was one of my audition songs, one of my favorite songs to sing. Um, yeah, that was what the audition process was like. Oh, wow. That's so interesting because looking at it, every single actor, whether it be from scooby and the Lost City of Gold or from a TV show or movie, has such a different audition process story to tell. Some of them are like, oh, it went on forever. I didn't really enjoy it. But it sounded like you quite enjoyed the audition process. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it was it was from the comfort of my own home, which was <laughs> nice. And the the one of the few blessings of COVID is being able to audition from your own home. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, it would have been cool to go out for to Montreal to do an audition. Uh, that's where the company is based. And um, but but uh, overall, yeah, it was a fantastic audition process. Oh, that's amazing. And after you were cast, did you go back and rewatch any of the shows? And what kind of research did you do to play Fred? Uh, I did. I, I watched the original one, of course, had to go back to the original source material. Um, uh, but I mean, as I mentioned before, there's not a lot to draw on from Fred, um, other than he's the guy driving the van and like says what to do to the gang. And then the gang will give their actual intellect into the how to solve the mystery um then i i rewatched what's new scooby-doo because i love it uh watched both of the live action movies uh and then i also just did a bunch of reading online of the, the history of fred um how he's appeared what his um <laughs> i found an interesting fact about his love interests life i went through his list of love interests and saw that black canary <laughs> was a love interest of his <laughs> when they did a mashup with the DC universe, a Scooby-Doo in the DC universe. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, that's about the extent of the research I did, as well as listening to the interviews with uh, Freddie Prince Jr. and Frank Walker. That's yeah. amazing. And I'm so glad because when we eventually get to either come out to America or the show comes to England, we're going to enjoy the show no matter what I feel. It's going to be amazing. And you're, I, I can just feel that your performance with Fred is just spot on and perfect. <laughs> Given that you play a core member of the gang, to what extent do you feel pressure of portraying a character that has such a pre-established fandom? Oh, I mean, it's there's so many years uh, of, of fans that, that have honestly come to see the show. Like the people young, people old have been coming to see the show. And as much as there are nerves behind going, am I the Fred that these people want? Um, there's also a lot of excitement when I get to, when we finish the show, when we do our bows and wave out at the audience and, um, and the kids are smiling, waving back or anybody in the front row sitting with their Scooby t-shirts on or just smiling and having the time of their lives. That's what's really, uh, that's a really re rewarding experience of doing, um, the show. So uh, it is, it is nerve wracking for trying this, uh, this absolute monster of a of a character through the um not he's not a monster but uh, the amount of source material for him is monstrous <laughs> yeah Absolutely. i mean i think you've explained that perfectly and i couldn't imagine because i get you know even nervous doing doing these types of interviews and of course this is like remote and i couldn't imagine the almost the adrenaline that you'd get performing in front of people but the one thing that I love about the parts that we can see of the show or at least here is when they release the official album because I absolutely loved it I remember I had like a massive stack of ironing to do that night so I was like huh, I know what I'm listening to when I'm doing this and so I loved every single one of the songs but personally to you do you have a favorite that stands out to you? Mm -hmm. Uh, I'd be biased saying do the Scooby-Doo. <laughs> I do love singing it. Uh, I think it is so well written and so well formed. Um, but a lot of the other songs as well really also gain their, their upper hand with, with like the characterizations that the rest of the cast brings with Brian Kling when he's singing Foodie. It's absolutely stunning just watching it from the side of the stage. And it, it's, it's so fun to watch him uh, playing around with Scooby, Claymall. Uh, Shabosh, uh, who does a fantastic job with Scooby. They have a wonderful, fun dynamic between them. Um, I also really love Follow the Stars. I, I, um, 
I'm not sure how much spoiling there is, but I listened to it on stage. And that's all I'll say. <laughs> I'm not sure. Oh, that just that's sounds great. so intriguing. I mean, <laughs> again, I feel like we're just slowly piecing little pieces together from the show. Uh, but it's fantastic. And of course, your next, I believe, I've checked the website again yesterday. And I think there were a few more dates added on. But the next one that I can see is on the 24th of this month, which is quite a big gap from the last performance. But this one in particular seemed to stand on its own. It didn't seem to be part of a leg. Was there any other reason for this besides, I think this one was maybe postponed from an earlier, it was meant to be shown earlier? Yeah, it was supposed to be shown uh, January 17th, either 17th or 19th, I believe in Laval, Quebec, and it was just due to COVID concerns. A lot of the Canadian theaters didn't want to book um, shows because they weren't sure if, sure if they are going to sell at that point. Mm -hmm. um, and, but now all, most of the restrictions in Canada are uh, done. So um, yeah, the show got, got moved from that date and now we're presenting it soon. Well, it's really good that, you know, a lot of theaters are opening back up again. And even if things have been delayed, they're starting to take place. I know. In a couple of the interviews, it had been speculated that it could, you know, start to head more over into Europe and places like that as well, which we would absolutely love to see. I think I speak for all of us when I say that. Um, but um, one thing I've got to ask is, do you have a favourite memory from, pre from performing the show so far, like a place that you visited or somebody that you've managed to meet, like an audience member or just like the audience themselves? Uh the audience themselves, absolutely. Uh, there was one of our shows, Fort Lauderdale is at the end of our first leg. Um, we ended up coming out on stage for a cast picture. And as we were getting organized in that chaos, um, a few of the audience members came to the front of the stage and there was a little boy sitting at the front of the stage. And uh, four of us, myself, um, Alicia, Sam and Brian, we came over and taught the kid the how to do the Scooby-Doo. Um, and that was a really, really, really cute experience. Um, uh, we saw that, that was a fantastic time as well as, oh, that same show. I think it was that same show. Right afterwards, after we do any show, there's always so much adrenaline and um, there's a, a big cool down factor after the show. So one time for about an hour in the dressing room, Brian, Justin, and I, we were in there absolutely laughing our faces off at these weird, silly, horrible jokes. Not not bad, but, but just not well-constructed jokes, but we were laughing and laughing, tears coming down our faces, um, and just having the last fill that dressing room was really, really fun, and one of, the, one of the hardest laughs I've had in a while. <laughs> Before. See, I imagine a lot of the fun will be like after the show. I know, you know, for us when we've done interviews quite often, the adrenaline can be that high afterwards and we can be that excited. We can just sit and talk for two hours after an interview just because the feeling is, you know, you can be on such a high. And so that my next question was going to be some more like of your funny behind the scenes memories from recording. I mean, I know you've said there's things like where you found the Scooby-Doo juices and things like that. And also that, you know, the time when you were just like laughing after the performances is there any other kind of behind the scenes funny stories of traveling and things like that that you can tell us? Oh, we, we have a bunch of fun little gang games that we do. Um, so there's there's one where if, you, if you're standing with your arms like that, if you have the hole, if somebody claps through that hole, you have to do 10 push-ups. So we have a lot of fun with that one. Um, there's another one where if you, if you take your hands and you look at somebody like that and you catch them uh, looking at you, they have to get up and do do hip gyrations, staring you in the eye while going wee woo, wee woo, wee woo. And the wee woo comes, comes from the show because Anne-Réanne Leblanc, um, our head puppeteer, uh, she, she <laughs> says that line in one of the sequences and one of the song sequences and it's absolutely hilarious. We die on the side of the stage every time, just the way she does it and delivers it. So that's why it became a part of that game. Um, yeah, those are just some of our games. See, I think we've been fortunate enough to hear her say that for all we've not managed to see the show. I think when we did the interview with her, did she not do that noise? I, think she I feel did like it I remember on our it. Interview. And I think it was either Christelle or Alicia that told us about that part as well. And that mm. was really fun to hear. Well. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we just, we make. We have so much time together that we just uh, bring out the best in all, everyone and we have so many 
so many little laughs. We also have a little bit where we um, where we fake being this uh, posh little kid going, Papa, I need the best caviar for dinner. And uh, we make a lot of little jokes uh, <laughs> in regards to that as well. Well, after hearing like, all the other cast members, you've definitely had like, a great time and there's great memories. Uh, but also, it was a really positive response to the performance in the play. How did you feel about that? What was your reaction to that? Oh, I mean, it's... Um... It doesn't surprise me with the show that Ella and Martin wrote. I, I'm happy to be a part of something so um, overwhelmingly positive. Like Everyone after the show is smiling. There's only ever good things to say about the show. I appreciate the smash rating that you gave us on, on your uh, on your uh, show. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's overwhelming. I've, I've never been a part of something that's as widespread and as um, with as many widespread positive reviews as, as this. Um, obviously, as we mentioned, uh, your next performance is on the 24th this month. Uh, what part of returning are you most excited about? Um, I mean, getting, getting back into the swing of things, I, um, I find that every time we come back, um, uh, we've improved so much. I mean, I, personally, I have uh, practice every day where I work on my acting. Um, and just go through every little piece of thing, something I can find uh, slowly and do visualization, visualization things, uh, gestural work, voice work. And so I find that every time I do come back to the show after these long stretches, um, there's something new that I've found within myself that I can bring to the character. And that's, that's really rewarding as somebody who is very um, intent on becoming a better, better actor and a better artist. Yeah. That's amazing and I think I, I've been training to be an actor and what the one thing I love most is adding my own little unique twist to, to things and the, my own twist to the characters so I'm so glad that you've managed to fit that in with like your performance as Fred and is there any additional pressure given that given that this is the last scheduled performance? Um, it's we've just added a couple more they've added four performances in June so we have the June 1st third fourth and fifth um but i will say that there is it's there's not pressure being at the last performance but there is a lot of pressure due to it being a performance that everyone in the cast has people who they know who is coming because it's, it's in montreal and most of the cast is from montreal um so i think christelle has like 20 people coming from her family and just having knowing people knowing people who know people who are coming is, is a, I feel the <laughs> pressure in that. Oh gosh, that's definitely nerve wracking. I I struggle just performing in front of my mum, so <laughs> I can't even imagine. But oh, the mums are the worst. I I can't perform in front of my family. It's, it's not it's not possible. <laughs> Where can people purchase tickets? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phantom Sorry. of the Opera. <laughs> Uh, well, you can purchase tickets at scooby-doo-live-tour.com slash tickets. That says where you can purchase them. Uh, yeah. Hey, that's a, absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for that. And if people are watching this, which I take it some people are, <laughs> please, 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 if you can make any of these showings, we urge you to do so. And we will not be envious in the slightest, although maybe a little bit, because we are dying to either have the show come here or at this point... I just kind of want to sell the majority of our possessions and get some plane tickets and just go and see it. But I suppose on that, um, do you hope for more showings to be added beyond maybe that those June days or maybe even an international tour? Would that be something that would appeal to you? Oh, yeah. I mean, that that's the dream. I love doing the show and I would keep doing it as long as they'll have me. And if we get to go to Europe, if we get to go to other places and keep doing the show, I will absolutely want to continue doing it that's phenomenal and do you have any works that you can share with us today please that are perhaps upcoming or something that you want to share uh, any workshop coming um nothing directly in the work right now um i do have a callback today that i'm going to be auditioning for a, a shakespeare show but uh as of now i don't know if i have that uh yet um yes nothing upcoming but if you do want to follow me on instagram you can follow me at underscore com Underscore, gosh, I can't speak today. Underscore Connor dot Briggs. I think that's whole tag. 
Okay, great. And is that the best place to keep up with all the work that you're doing? Or is there any other social medias or anything like that that people can keep track of? Uh, Instagram is probably the best place. To keep. I don't post very often. I'm not great on social media, <laughs> but I'll, I'll do my best to keep you guys up to date on there. Thank you so much for that. That will be linked in the description down below along with the show's websites where you can purchase tickets and all of that. Um, that is all the questions we do have for you today. So thank you so much for again coming on. It's been so nice to speak to you. And it just seems like this is just such a fun thing to take part in. Yeah, thank you for having me. I, I really enjoyed this interview. You guys are all really well spoken. Fantastic questions. And uh, yeah, thank you so much for having me. Thank you so much. So I guess just to wrap it up, um, thank you so much to everyone watching this. It's so nice to have you guys along for the ride as well. Please let us know in the comment section if you do plan to see this show or if you have seen it, please tell us what you think because we love to hear the positivity that everyone has about this. Again, huge additional thank you to Sophie. You can find them on Scooby-Doo We Do For Life on Instagram. Very, very like last minute thing. So huge credit to Sophie for being able to make this interview. Thank you so much for that. And of course, you can find Rihanna's social link in the description as well so yeah this has been another interview on the jb and millie channel thank you for joining and we'll see you next time